All right guys, so it's a new day. Yes, I'm wearing the same clothes. Yes, I changed my underwear. But today we're doing a complete interior makeover. You can see we've got a new steering wheel, a bigger screen, Apple CarPlay. We've got some uh, carbon fiber shifters. We have a gauge. So um, I'm actually gonna break these up into individual videos. That way this isn't like an hour long and it'll just be easier for people to find it. But uh, we're gonna start off with the screen and the Apple CarPlay. Okay, the first thing that we're going to be installing to upgrade his interior is the MMI Prime from Beamer Tech. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow his car to have CarPlay and Android Auto. So maybe you have an Apple phone, you convert to Android, or maybe the opposite, you're gonna still be compatible, which is great. The other thing is we are gonna get rid of this little baby screen, the little 6.5 inch, and we're adding an OEM 8.8 .8 inch screen. So it's gonna look a million times better, and I can't wait to see that instead of that. First thing we're going to do, just lay down some microfibers to make sure everything is well protected. And then once you've done that, we're gonna remove this center dash trim. If you haven't done it, it's very easy and you don't even really need any tools. So all you do is just grab, just rock it back and forth. So then you can take this, and there are two connections. So the first connection is for your climbing control down here, and then there's a second one for your hazard switch. So if you look up here, this is the one for your climate control. So all you do is just disconnect it like that. And for the hazard switch, what I like to do is if you just push on it, once you have it out, there's just a little button down here. So you just press on that, and then that will pull right through, and you can put this in a safe place. Next, there's a little piece of dash trim right here that we need to remove. So to do that, just take a plastic pry tool like this. You're gonna rock it down. And there's a little connection in here. You just slide that out. Next, we need to remove the face plate. There are four T20s. There's two on the lower portion here, and then two on the upper portion. So we're just gonna remove these. Then you're gonna slide this out. And there's a little connection in the back that needs to be disconnected. So once that is disconnected, we can disconnect this connection. If you have this one down here, uh, if you have an LCI car, you're just going to have this additional connection. If not, you don't have to worry about it. So with that, we're going to put this in our safe place. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the screen. There are two T20s. There's one right up here. Once you've removed the two screws that hold the screen in, you're going to remove the screws that hold your head unit in. Now on Justin's it just has two, but some will have four. Okay. Then once you've done that, you're gonna take your head unit, it's gonna slide out just like that. And we're just gonna rest it here on our microfiber towel. And now that we have this position like that, we're going to be able to lift up our screen and have a little slack. Now, if you try to take out the screen before you pull out the head unit like this, a lot of times what's gonna happen is it's not gonna be quite long enough, so it's gonna give you a little bit of a fight. And then what you can do, just press on this little button up here, one right there, and then you can just wiggle this connection, the video connection out of your stock screen. Okay, just like that. Once again, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of the factory screen and the 8.8 .8 inch, so drastic difference. So here's a look at the screen side-by-side, -side, and uh, this kind of reminds me a little bit of my rear seat conversion with the folding seat. It's like these screens are um, very modular and that you can upgrade them pretty easily. And the question is, why on the 340i was the bigger screen not just included? Like, why put that behind a paywall? to begin with. And when you think about the cost of manufacturing, is it really that much more expensive to make this? But I don't know, that's just my thoughts. BMW is weird with stuff like that, but fortunately, pretty easy to swap these out. Okay, so now we are ready to start installing the MMI Prime, which kind of looks like this. Um, so with it, you'll notice that there are a few different cords. So you're going to have your LVDS, which is your video uh, cable. You have your quad lock which looks like this. And this is what's going to give it power and a couple other things like can readings and whatnot. You have 
your, we'll call this an accessory harness, looks like this. Um, for Apple CarPlay today, this may change in the future um, as everything goes wireless, but you can use Apple CarPlay wirelessly, but Android Auto you do have to plug in. Um, you also have the ability to do things like add a front camera, add a rear camera, and some other features, which is pretty cool, especially because BMW sometimes cheaps out like they do on Justin's screen. Sometimes it won't give you a backup camera. He luckily has a backup camera, but if you don't have one, you can have one. We have our antenna, and especially for the iPhone, this is what is going to be able to connect to your phone to give you that ability to be wireless CarPlay, just like BMW. So with that, I'm gonna start with the quad lock, which is this big one here. And what we're gonna do, if you look on the back of the screen, so first I'm gonna pull out this video cable, you just pull it straight down. There's going to be a little lever, so there's going to be a lock. Um, on the BMW OEM one, you squeeze on the sides with the Beamer Tech one. It's just this little clip right there, so you, you just pull up right there and then you're able to swing this down. Now the cool thing about it is when you go to unlock it, as you pull this lever, it's going to pull it out. And as you go to lock it, it's going to pull it in to make sure that everything is fully seated. So with that, I'm going to press in on the sides and the cord's really short, so it's a little bit hard to show you. And then you just push up and as you saw, it just rocks it out just like that. Then once you have your factory quad lock dis disassembled, what you need to do is you need to lift up on this little tab and you need to transfer over your fiber optic cable. So it's going to go in just like that. So you're gonna take it, and that's going to get installed into your new one. So then your new one can get inserted just like that. Clip that in. Take your old one. Feed it in. Rock it down just like that. If you don't do that, you will not get audio. And then we're going to take this wire, which is going to give our multimedia interface the power. We're just gonna route this behind so that we can get it to go underneath the head unit. Then we're going to take the video cable that we pulled out of the screen and we're gonna route that underneath as well for now. Then we're going to take our new video cable and we're going to route this side down. So you're gonna start up here. You can just route it down, go to the side of the vent. Just keep going down. We're going to take our, our new larger screen. Just gonna take this, press it into the back just like that. You're gonna wanna pull your cord as you do it. And this is gonna go like that. It's gonna sit down just like that. Once you've done all of that, you're gonna to wanna to push your quad lock down, that, that big block connector, because it might get in the way. And then you can take your head unit, slide it back in, and then we're going to reinstall the two screws that we removed from there. Then we're going to take those screws with washers, we're gonna screw in the screen. Okay, so now you're going to take your accessory harness and you're going to take this little USB and you're going to feed it down so that it comes out right here. Now you can you can pretty much mount this wherever you want. Um, you don't have any Androids, do you? No. Yeah, so Justin doesn't have an Android, so this isn't even really gonna get used. But what I like to do is I like to just put it right around here so that if you ever need to access it, all you need to do is just lift up this little piece right there and then you can pull that out and use it. Um, but for this car, not even needed. Um, so after that, um, we are ready to mount the actual multimedia interface. Um, on the back, it's going to tell you how to set the dip switches. So. For this version, because we're not doing a backup camera or anything, um, you just need to follow the directions on the back. So it says number one, always set to on. Number two, always set to on, uh, which they already are. 
as we can see right there. Number three, it says set to on if you have an 8.8 .8 inch screen or the 10 inch screen or if you have the little six inch screen that we just got rid of, you flip it off and then it tells you what to do with the rest right on it. Uh, we're not gonna go step by step just in case they ever change that. Um, just look on the sticker and it's gonna give you all the info that you need. So once you've done that, we're gonna hook everything together. I'm going to take the antenna and we're just going to twist that on like that. We're gonna do some testing before we actually put everything away. Um, the one, the video connection that's straight like this, this is going to be LCD out because this is going up to the screen. Here's our power cable from our quad lock. That's going to plug in here. And the nice thing too is each thing only plugs in basically one spot with the exception of the, the video cable. We're going to plug in our accessory cable right over here. And then last but not least, the one with the bend in it is going to be our LCD in. Okay, so plug it in just like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sit this here for one second and we are going to test it out. Now, I haven't coded the screen yet, so that may need to get done before we actually do true testing, but we'll walk you through that process as well. Okay, so we are going to put the car in accessory mode. And as you can see, we've got nothing. <laughs> so we need to do some coding first. So I'm going to do it with my VPeak adapter. I'm just plug this in. Car in accessory mode. And I'm gonna open up dimmer code. I'm gonna connect to the car. So then once you've done that, you have to go back into expert mode and then type in display. And this one right there, you have to change it to the second one. And then you can go and you can code that. All right, so we're gonna turn off the ignition for a little while. Turn it on and we should have a picture. All right, we let the car sit off for a little bit. Let's turn it on and see if it works. All right, look at that screen. So much better. All right, so as you can see, we have CarPlay fully installed with our coded 8.8 .8 inch screen and it looks so good. So now if you wanna use Waze, you wanna use your music or anything, it's all on the screen. It's so cool. And it makes this car look so much more modern. Not that it's an old car or anything, but that old that other screen just made it look just really bad. So this just completely transforms the interior of this car. All right, so we just finished up with the screen upgrade as well as the car play. It looks awesome. Big thanks to Brian for hooking that up. We ran into a couple of small issues, but he's a great problem solver. We got it all worked <laughs> out. So I'll probably do a full review of this thing eventually just to like to show you how everything works and uh, the different functions but this is just like the DIY installation we're going to wrap up this one and start the steering wheel so I know that I've said in previous videos that I'm not much of an infotainment guy in the sense that the screen isn't going to prevent me from buying a car but it is nice to be able to upgrade it in the aftermarket it's nice that options like this exist uh, let's say that you found a really good deal on the car and it's not you know 100% what you were looking for you do have the option to swap that out they're pretty modular in that way and uh, yeah I'm just loving it so far um, it's seamlessly integrated into the car meaning that you're still using the iDrive knob to control everything on there uh, the volume buttons on the steering wheel still work like they used to you can still use the physical buttons on the radio to advance to the next song so everything just works the way that you'd expect it to and if you didn't know any better you would think that it just came from the factory with that so just a couple of frequently asked questions that I know that people are going to ask. Yes, you can still switch back to the iDrive view. Let's say you want to check your tire pressure or reset your oil level. You can still do all of that stuff. Uh, you basically just hold the menu button for a couple of seconds and it switches back to the iDrive, the standard iDrive view. Uh, when you put the car in reverse, it will automatically switch to the backup camera. You don't have to press any buttons. Everything still works the way that it used to like that. 
um, you don't have to set anything up uh, every day when you get in your car. You basically set it up one time and then from then out, it just knows to automatically connect. So that's really nice. So again, everything just, it just works the way that you would think that it would. And I love modifications like this. So the links are gonna be below. Again, big thanks to Brian at Keys Motorsports for hooking all this stuff up and uh, just installing everything. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.